So I was recently asked to do a video on the Jag Panther II, a beautiful little tier eight German tank destroyer. And I thought, well, why not? I've got a few videos of it. So let's have an in-depth look at the tank. Hello again everybody and welcome back to Fujits Blitz and as I said today we're going to be looking at the Panther 2. That's it there in all its glory. A beautiful little German tier 8 tank destroyer. Didn't exist in real life but it's based on a panther. Looking at the stats, well HP not too bad. It's you know above average. View range particularly good. As you can see there the DPM isn't too bad for a tier 8 TD. Penetration is average as well. But the damage, well it's in the top three. Interestingly. Penetration lost over distance, it's the top in its class and tier. Obviously it comes with three guns and we're looking at the top gun in real terms. Rate of fire, really good. Especially for a TD that churns out this much damage. Reload time, mm, it's not too bad either. Aim time is pretty good, and as you can see, all the other bits and bobs there are quite good. Wargaming recommend that you should long range snipe and brawl in this thing, oddly enough. Which, to be fair, I agree with. Looking at it against the other TDs in tier 8, and you can see here that the likes of the ISU 152 and the T28 is beating it on DPM, but only marginally. I mean, it's still churning out 3000 on its standard. The AMX, the Heary Type 1, the ISU and the T28 all beat it on penetration, but marginally. Rate of fire, however, it wipes the board with almost everything apart from the Heary, the Charioteer and the T28. And the shell velocity, it's pretty good as well. Aim time, well, it's not too bad, only beaten by the AMX. And if you look here, I mean the credit coefficient, 90%, okay, it's pretty low. But look at that armor and look at that HP. I mean, that's the thing that makes this tank. I mean, it's good armor wise. Win rate, well, it's pretty average 51.31%. It's not setting the world on fire, but it's above average, as I said. That's what its armor profile looks like. As you can see, it's paper thin on the sides, pretty thin on the front, but that mantle and gun is pretty rock solid. If I stick it against a Tiger II, however, you will see there that if you put this thing hauled down, it's pretty difficult to pen. That's why they recommend a brawl. If you can get up close and personal in this thing, then you're on a winner. So what's it like to drive? Well, this is me rolling out in Helles the other day. And I mean, I do love the JP2. I mean, it's a fantastically versatile TD, as you will see. I mean, look at that. I mean, 500 straight to the side of that Panther II from quite some distance. I mean, this is why I like the tank. It is versatile. And unlike the likes of the Borsig, which is also a tier eight German TD, this thing has some armor. Interestingly, I mean, this tank never really existed, whereas the Ferdinand did. And this is better than the Ferdinand. And, and the Ferdinand is a nice TD. Tricky, I agree. But this one is just more palatable. This one it just seems a lot, well, it's, it's new friendly compared to the Ferdinand. I mean, they both got equal type of guns and they both got, uh, have an equal game style. But the JP2 just feels better. It feels easier. It's, it's a lot friendlier than the Ferdinand. And I like the Ferdinand, but I love this tank. I mean, this tank is, oh, well, it's spectacular. It's got a fantastic gun. It does have some decent armor and it's got really good mobility. I mean, look at the gun here. I mean, you can thread it through. The aim time is just a dream. And I, I, okay, I'm not gonna set the world on fire in this game. I'm only gonna get a third class and do about what? 3000 damage, I think it is. Not much in a JP2. But the idea of the tank is, I mean, look what you can do with it. I mean, it's just spectacular. I mean, you can really get some fine shots in with this gun. And like I keep saying, it's a very versatile tank. Okay, it does bounce every now and then like that. But you can stick this thing at very good. I mean, I, I agree with Wargaming. You can brawl in it, as you saw in the intro, against IS-3. And you can do long range sniping in it, like you've just seen me do there. 
that's how versatile this tank is. You get the best of sort of all worlds with it. And as a TD, as I say, it's not as tricky as the poor old Borsig, which really is tricky. I mean, okay, it's got a great derpy gun, but it has no armor. It has a relatively decent turn of speed, but it really is let down by its armor. So I didn't set the world on fire there. I just want to show you that, you know, you can long range sniping it. It's a versatile tank. And the only damage I did was when I dropped off the bloody um, cliff face. But let's see what you need to do to get an ace. Well, this is go to HAL 666, previously of the clan CBF, here on Normandy in his JP2 on the EU server. And I mean, look at that. Like I said, you can thread the shots. I mean, it's the 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 aim time is great, and it's it's almost pinpoint precision accuracy on this gun, which for a TD is pretty pretty good, and that's what really makes this TD really good. I mean, the gun on it is spectacular. I mean, how many times have you rolled out, say, in the ISU one five two? and waited an eternity for that reticle to come down, try to thread a shot only to see the dispersion send it winging somewhere else. Well, it happens a lot in an ISU. It doesn't in a JP2 because the gun is almost precision accurate. You can really pull some spectacular shots off. I mean, I don't know why you were shooting the rock there. <laughs> it happens. I do that all the time. And, and, and that's what makes this tank such a dream to drive. Couple that with the damage it's churning out, along with its mobility and armor. I mean, it's just a dream tank. I mean, two shots in that E25 is gone. Okay, it's an E25, it's paper thin. But that's not the point. He's already up to a thousand damage. And again, the top of the Carnarvon. I mean, that is a tricky shot, threading a shot into the commander's cupola on a Carnarvon ain't easy, <laughs> but in a JP2, it ain't difficult either. And, you know, if you haven't got this tank, then you need to get it in your garage because it is beautiful. It is a beautiful tier eight TD. It really, really is. So already he's up to 2,169. He's bounced 450, he's taken a kill. He's just had a kill stolen from him, bless. Um, you know, he's, he's having a good game, and as you can see, he's lost a little bit of half. Watch this, though. I mean, look at this HE roll here. Not the best, but you see how long it takes that reticle to come down? It's next to no time. It's unbelievable. And now, look at that. Another 200 really bad shot. Then ram him, then kill him. I mean, <laughs> unbelievable. This is a just a fantastic tank. And if you like your TDs, and you haven't got this, like I said, you need to get it. If you have got it and you've not been out in it for a while, give it another turn because it is beautiful. It really is a beautiful tank. And, you know, he's done 3,335 damage. He's bounced 450, he's taken two kills. I, th this is a nice game in the Jagdpanzer 2. Sorry, Jagdpanzer 2 here on Normandy. And, uh, you know, this is the type of game style this TD likes. It doesn't like being sat in a bush at the back. It hates it. It gets all upset. It needs to be up front where the battle is. It needs to be involved. That's why it's got massive armor on the front. That's why it's got a beautiful gun. That's why it's got a fantastic reload. That's why it's got nice penetration. I mean, look at this. <laughs> Unbelievable. 4,204 damage, three kills, aggressive play style. That J Panther is purring. I'm telling you, it's just purring. It loves it. Next up, we got a good friend of mine, Matthew, uh, aka This Game is Rigged from the clan NNN, again on the EU server. Rolling out in what he says is one of his favourites, if not his favourite, TD at Tier 8. Yep, yeah, that's right. The Jag Panther 2. And again, look at him. He's being ultra-aggressive. 
And this is what I'm telling you guys. I mean, this is a tank that purrs when it's being aggressive. It doesn't mind it. It doesn't like being sat in a bush at the back sniping. It likes being in the thick of the action. It likes getting involved. Now, I'm not saying that all of you are going to be able to play the tank this aggressively, but you should give it a bash because with that frontal armor on its casemate, not on the hull, I mean, the hull is paper thin, it likes it, it doesn't mind it. And, you know, a lot of people think, oh, it's a TD, and like all TDs, you need to stay at the back. Not necessarily. All TDs play differently. And this is one of those TDs that does like frontlining it. Hence the reason why Wargaming say it's good in a brawl. And it's also good at sniping because the gun is fantastic. But look at how he moves the tank around. <laughs> the mobility on this thing is just spectacular. And you can do that. You can throw this thing around the battlefield. And with that load time, I mean, look at this load time. It's just over nine seconds. I mean, that's a derp gun for Pete's sake. And you're getting a load time of nine seconds. Now, he's already dished out just shy of 2,000 damage. He hasn't taken any kills yet. All of a sudden, there's only three of his team left. Um, and, you know, basically, it's four against three. Wowzers. What can you say? What can he do? Can he pull it back? We, well, we've already seen a VK101P on, well, next to no hit points. There are three other tanks out there which are quite nasty. There's one of them, Tiger 2. That's about. But then he... Uh, He's down to no hit points now, 198. Oof, it's not looking good. There's a waffle tractor. Oh my giddy aunt. Boom, almost 500 into the front of the waffle tractor. Now he's only got three hit points. Eek. <laughs> waffle tractor's lost almost all his stuff. And now he's gone, he's back to the garage. So now it's two on three. What a comeback. However, he's still only on three hit points. How he managed to only survive with three hit points is beyond me. Bounces the Tigger 2. <laughs> wow. Should have load HD there, Tigger 2. If you would have loaded your HE, then he would be gone. But you didn't. You had something else in. Now he gets three shots on the T32. Sticks a nice one into the side. Load that HE. Try and get that engine deck if you can. There you go, that's a low roll because somebody else smacks him. 3,885 damage. Oof. Three kills, capped bases, and gets a shed load of credits. And in Matthew's own words, by the way, he says that was the easiest ace he's ever got in that tank. But it just goes to show the versatility of the tank. I've been Fujit. That has been the Jag Panther 2 the German Tier 8 TD. By all means, comment, like, and everything below. If you haven't yet, get those fingers pressing the subscribe button. It's a lovely thing to do, cost you nothing, puts a smile on my face, and all that sort of jazz. If you've got any decent replays, don't forget to wing them across to me at fujitblitz at gmail.com or post them to my Discord server, whatever is easier for you. Don't forget, try and get those I stayed at home avatars, guys, really, Hashtag stay at home. It's the wisest thing to do in the current situation. And until the next time, big thank you to all my Patreons who, without their continued support, videos like this would be a lot harder to do. Until then, really, stay safe out there. I really can't say that more than I should. Have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking because that is what it's all about. Seriously, staying safe, having fun and being happy.